Welcome back to School of Calisthenics. Today we're talking about... Jumping! Anyone that didn't catch what that was, it was jumping. Oh, I, did, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> it was and we're going to hopefully specifically look at a little bit of plyometrics, which is a fancy word we'll get into that basically means jumping. People ask us about lower body exercises and training in calisthenics. What does it look like for body weight? Because we're trying to kind of have a flexible approach to how we're training where we don't need a lot of equipment. And plyometrics or jumping based exercises are really effective for that. We use them a lot from a sports performance perspective, but they actually have got great conditioning component, components. And it also just gives us a lot of longevity we want strong powerful legs that can actually react and they can move because that's what life is going to entail and i don't want to be falling off curbs when i'm 70 years yeah, old we know a lot of you are into your running you're into your obstacle course racing and this is going to help for all of that work so there's one way to jump and there's a better way and we're going to go through the techniques to make sure that you're keeping it safe and keeping those joints healthy and actually making sure that your biomechanics are going to improve at the same time the first exercise we're going to have a look at is the vertical jump. Now, if those of you that may not know about Dave's history, this guy's got some hops. So give us head of hops. I used to. When I used to train a lot. Show us a vertical jump. So we're looking for vertical height. How high was that? It's good. Okay. <laughs> you don't measure it. So we're looking for to how much vertical height we can get, but it's all built around having a robust squat pattern. So let's cover off the basics of that, because if we can't squat body weight without the jump, it's really not going to translate well when we try and put more force and power into movement. So we're looking at feet facing forward for our jumps. That's our most natural biomechanical position. Dave's going to load the squat and get to put his hands up on the side of his temples. Of course, a prison squat. So when he drops down, we're going to think about the feet and the knees like they're on train tracks. We don't want them coming together at any point. So he sits down and keeps the distance of the knees in line with the second toe. If we, what we don't want to see is the knees coming in together or the feet turning outwards. If that's going on, we've probably got some muscle tightness that we need to deal with, but we want to make sure we're trying to work through a range of movement where we can keep those in line. So as you go through your plyometric training, if you can't do these things and you're finding some compensations, you're just going to start to work on the range of movement that you can control and then put some more flexibility and corrective correct work in there as well so that's our first stage stage number two is going to be just a jump and a hold landing mechanics are really important when the body comes down from being in the air it's going to hit the ground and it's going to absorb what we call ground reaction forces we're going to get some force coming from the ground which is going to put some stress in the system it's really important that we keep the same principles as in the landing as we did in the takeoff making sure the feet stay facing forward we're not seeing those knees collapse in we're keeping a nice strong stable base so dave jumps and he holds that squat position. That's really important. Don't be in too much of a rush to stand up. Show us again. So we come up. So they're great reps. Show us one, Jacko, when the knees collapse in. What you're trying to avoid is this position where we're hitting the ground and we're getting these knees banging together. You can just see that force is being absorbed from the ground and we're just not dealing with it very well and putting unnecessary stress onto the joints as well. So if we can do stage two, we can jump and land. We might be looking to hold their landing for about three seconds. When you can put five or six reps of those together and you're feeling com confident, you can then start to get some rebounds in. And this is where the magic is really. If we can start to hit the ground and take off. Each time the landing mechanics are good, the takeoff mechanics are good, the knees are strong. You can see Dave's really using that upper body as well to start to get as much vertical height as he can. And what, how do they feel? They're hard. So we get a little bit of a metabolic um, element to this as well. Again, the key thing being that we're holding that technique together. Don't jump badly because you're really going to start to put a lot of stress on the system and that's not what we want. But that's a really nice little either conditioning exercise or if you want to work for more power because you're an explosive sport or you're working towards something which is going to require a high amount of force production, whether that might be obstacle course racing, something similar, you can do sets of those slightly longer rest in between, get the recovery and then go again. Or if we were doing an endurance workout, another set. When you start to get confident and comfortable with those, trying to increase the height you uh, are rebounding at is really important and that's the aim of the game, trying to get higher and higher. Something to think about and focus on is trying to push the floor down. Thinking about that is going to help you go higher and then in terms of when you land and rebound, trying to reduce that contact time as much as possible. So quickly off the floor is going to give you a better plyometric effect, help you with your running, your obstacle course racing, as well as actually getting you higher so you increase your speed. Vertical jumps are a great plyometric exercise and there's, a, there's research shows that it's a direct link between how high you can jump in a vertical jump to how fast you can go. So working on them is really going to help 
with your speed. But another exercise to progress on from there once you're confident and come to those uh, knee positions and alignment in your squat is going into a unilateral position, AKA the lunge. So we'll just go through and build the same sort of principles again, but just look at the technique for this. So um, it's going to uh, replicate more of your uh, running mechanics in terms of opposite arm and legs working together um, in this position. So first thing to look, we're trying to look at in terms of some straight lines. We're trying to look again, a relatively straight line from knee, hip to shoulder. And that's only going to come if you've got the hip flexibility here. And then that allows us to have a nice straight uh, vertical shin position. So the knee on that front side is stacked over the uh, ankle on, the, on that front foot. So the same, same principles as we did with the vertical jump, we're going to build this up steadily. So just having control through this lunge position, he's going dropping down and then driving back up, making sure that he's got control of that front knee. As he's driving up, what we want to make sure is that that knee stays directly stacked over the ankle. And as he comes in, it doesn't buckle inwards and come across his, uh, the midline of his body. We want to try and keep it nice and straight. Straight is going to be more efficient for force production, but it's also going to help protect your knees and stop you from picking up any injuries. Once we've got that, we're going to then look to do a little jump from that position and then land under control. And then that little pause, so he drives that front foot down to the floor, swaps over, but controls that landing so that he's got the knee in control over the ankle. And then he jumps to the other side and control that low position. He's going to hold in that position for a couple of seconds just to make sure he's got control of that landing and he's happy with his knee position <laughs> and his balance. And then just take note finally before we move on, this uh, the arm and hand position, running mechanics. So it's opposite arm to leg forward, just as you would be when you're running. No one runs along like this, same arm and leg. But when you're doing these lunges, sometimes because you're trying to think about quite a few different things, your brain gets a little bit confused and we get some, we get some funky things happening <laughs> like this. So you're gonna make sure you get those locked in before you start to then spring and rep these out together. So the final part for Tim would be to then link these together and make them nice and explosive and popping up off the floor. Now, when you're doing these, don't worry if it feels like it takes you a little bit longer to get off the floor than the um, normal vertical jump. If you think about it, there's a lot more load going through on the one side, that front leg's providing most of your uh, force production, and it might feel like there's that contact time is a little bit longer, but that's okay because that's actually exactly what we're trying to get out of this with this lunge exercise, progressing it on from that vertical jump. So there's two lower body exercises, guys, both plyometric. I really like this kind of stuff because it's the sort of thing which we feel like it's what I should be able to do. If I've got some athletic capacity, I should be able to jump. And I think practicing those not only gives you the, that quality to be able to do these different things, move in different ways, have some tools in the locker, but it's also going to help to get a workout done. It's a little style like yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, not only with this help, actually help you with sort of your running and your efficiency and your economy of running, um, it help you also with your speed. And then if you're doing it correctly and paying attention to those um, alignments with your knee, your hip and your ankle, it's also going to help you to, to be a little bit more robust with that lower body um, in terms of injury prevention for if you're a runner or if you're doing running as part of your OCR obstacle course racing work and training. Perfect. So throw some of these in your program, guys, and might be using them already. Just go back and relook at the technique again, move with precision and control, and hopefully you're going to feel those benefits of having some plyometric training for your lower body. And hopefully we'll see you jumping around somewhere. Till next time, class dismissed.